All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I'm your host, Larry, the most delectable Chupacabra man. And today we're going to be checking out another indie title called Neon Warp, which is made by Axel Sonic and produced by, or published by Otaku Maker. And Neon Warp is a game where you have to match up colors in sort of like a Rubik's Cube kind of mentality where you have to walk across little platforms or little squares, and depending on what square you were standing on and what color it was, it changes the one that you're about to walk onto, and you have to match up as many of the squares, up to all of them but one, with the same color in a certain number of moves in order to progress further in the game. It sounds really simple, but depending on who you are, including your pal Larry here, it can be a tad bit challenging. So let's just jump in here and I'll explain it as we go. So you start out with a series of squares and you eventually want to change their color. And for this first section of the game, you want all of these squares to be red. Now you can pick whatever square you'd like to start out on. And basically how this works is blue plus purple equals red and then red plus either of the other one equals purple or blue. And we want to make them all red. So we're just gonna walk over. So this one's now red. This one's now purple. That one's red. That one's blue. And now that one's red. So we got full points for managing the level in six moves or less. But for the most part, these levels are pretty much on par with the number that you need to get a certain star rating. So for three stars or three golden pixels, you need to defeat this particular level in six moves. For two, you need to do it in nine. And for minimum completion, you need to do it in 12 in case, uh, well, you just don't like how these pixels look at you funny and all that. I do okay at some of these, like, levels, not so much at others. And in a nutshell, this is the whole idea. You just try to change as many of them as possible. In as little time as possible. There we go. Did I get- no, I got that in 12. So that's fine, that's two golden pixels. And this one, the goal is to get it in eight, if possible, so... Pretty much all of these, whoops, pretty much all of these combos might result in bacon. There we go. I got that in 10, so I got two golden pixels. And if you screw up bad enough in this game, it will be more than happy to tell you with that loud janky noise that um you have screwed up and you need to restart the level from scratch. So let's see here. I vaguely recall doing this level. The goal is 16 moves. Hmm. There's not a great way to do some of these. And I probably should have remembered better what the trick was. But the good news is you can restart this as many times as you decide that you need. I tend to like to work from the outside in, but it really depends on your playstyle. There we go, so I got that in 20 turns, so that's two golden pixels. And it's basically one of those games where you kind of got to pick up the logic as you go. That's, that's really the only way to think about it. It's a combination of colors, and I've played games that are similar to this, but they get a little bit crazy and hectic, where you have to know, like, how the color wheel works in art, which I do, but, you know, fast-paced remembering colors is kind of weird in my brain. And it doesn't always work. There we go, I got that in 13, so haha! -ha! I actually beat my previous best on this level. It's not too bad. And then they start to throw some different concepts at you. The guy that made this and this is, if you see here, there's this little gray bar here, kind of like a black bar. That means that if you touch this middle 
cube, whatever color it turns into, the cubes to either side of it in a line will also turn into that color. So what was the combination here? I think it was like here, 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 here. No, that wasn't the one. I, I started practicing this, but it doesn't always want to behave itself for me. So I need to get this to be red, so I need to go here, here. No, that wasn't it either. Well, gosh, darn it. Will this work? Maybe. You know, I was just doing this like 10 minutes ago, and I've already forgotten the combination. Good thing that there hasn't been a James Bond scenario involving a Rubik's Cube, or we'd all be dead right now. So, that's all you need to really worry about. And this is definitely a game that you can kind of fiddle with until you really get it figured out, honestly. Unfortunately, like, I'm already at 32 turns, and like, it's really easy to go over the allotted number, so you gotta be a little bit careful. So let's see. No, that's not what I wanted. Nope, that's not quite it. Perhaps I need to go... No, that's not the one. Start up here? We, we have too many blocks on the bottom that are getting janky, so I think I need to start on the bottom. Nope, that's not doing it either. Hmm. I remember doing a bizarre loop-de-loop -loop here. Was it here, here? Nope. Nope, that wasn't quite it either. Oh, there it was. Okay, so it took it took me just a second, but I got the three golden pixels. I didn't even have to look at a guide. Although, this is a tricky game to do commentary for, because it requires a fair bit of concentration. So, I did not get the three pixels on this one. We're only doing it in three moves. So, move up here, up here. There we go. Oh, well. Never mind, I... When you don't think about it so hard, when I'm trying to learn a game, maybe that's my trouble in life. I just overthink all of life's greatest problems. This one was tricky for me, though. This one... I couldn't get it in under 10. I just couldn't. It, it really messed with my brain parts. So... Actually, never mind. That was another situation where I over... Where I overcomplexified it. So this is what I did the first time. I came down here. I I went like over here. No, no, no. I started here, went over, went up, and then like I had to do a thing up here. And it took like a bunch of extra turns, but I eventually got it. Oh well. I you know what, Larry? You're just overthinking it. You just that's your whole life story right there. So let's see here. I don't want to do that one again. Let's go down to the next line. So if you notice here in the game's menu, you've got multiple lines of color. So the first line, you want to make your blocks red. The second line, it's a subtle thing, but you got to change your lines to purple. And then you got to change your lines to like the light blue scion color. And there's a lot of levels in this game. There's like what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like what? Fifty, a hundred, hundred and fifty levels. That is a fair amount of levels for this game. So I gotta say, that's that's top notch. So we want to get all of these to be blue. There we go. See that was quick enough. I'm I'm getting the hang of it tonight. You don't have to judge Larry's ability to, to color match. I'm not colorblind. I'm not like that beagle from Seinfeld that just judges people quietly in the night. Yeah, I'm not definitely not that beagle. Oh, I think I've already horsed this up, haven't I? 
Ah, crap. Gotta start here in the corner, I think. Oh, there it goes. 20? I'll take 20. Some of these are, like, more trial and error than anything, because it's multiple different branching paths that you can go to. It's difficult for your pal Larry to systematically think about. So anyway, this has been Neon Warp. It's a very simple game. I, I like it. It's a really decent... I mean, I would go, you know, it's a good, it's a good puzzle game. It's a simple concept, but it really brain teased me until I I thought about the underlying sort of logic behind it. And I think the only qualm that I have for this game, if we go back to the menu, is I feel there should be this sort of helpful interface for a couple more levels as you start going through like two, three, and four to, to kind of help you understand the logic that you're looking for. The, the kind of things that you're looking for, because not everyone's brain works the same way when, when figuring out puzzles and everything. But it's got a pretty good control scheme. You know, you can control it with your mouse. I think the only thing I'd really want for this game, besides maybe some more tutorial levels just to help people, is the ability to use WASD to control it and maybe hit the R key to reset the level. And then when you're picking the block that you want to start on, you can just hit E to select it. But other than that, it's got good mouse control. It's got good gamepad support if you want to use your game controller for like your Xbox or your PS4. And that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This game is $2.99, $3. It's really great value, honestly. 150 levels, nice relaxing soundtrack, nice little brain teasers, neon colors that are a soothing, relaxing color, unless you don't like bright red because it reminds you of that pimple you had in, in I don't know, gym class when you were 12. But yeah, check it out for yourselves. It's on Steam, $2.99. Great. I mean, it's not an expensive game, and if you're looking for puzzle games, you're a big fan of puzzle games, check her out. Neon War by Axel Sonic. And that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra, briefly checking out Neon Warp. And I'll catch you guys and gals next time. I'm actually going to try and get further into this game, because I thoroughly enjoy it. So, bye, everybody. <laughs>